I've been a professional photographer for over 15 years now, and the entire time I have been notoriously bad about printing photographs. I recently bought this house, and for the last year, almost all of the walls have been completely bare. But no more. I have printed out a ton of different photographs, a ton of different printing material. I've done some framed, I've done some frameless, I've done some acrylic. I've also purchased two frame televisions, which are televisions that turn into artwork when they're not being used. Let me take you through this entire ridiculous process and I'm going to hopefully be able to inspire you to also print your work. Now, I've taken tons of photographs over my entire career, but the truth is 99% of them would make no sense hanging on my wall. For instance, I was a wedding photographer for over a decade. I'm not gonna hang somebody else's wedding photos on my wall. I've done headshots. I'm not gonna hang a portrait of somebody else on my wall. I've done product photography. I'm not gonna print out and hang a picture of a drone or a car on my wall. So that really limits me to family photography, obviously, but mostly nature photography. Now, I've been lucky enough to travel the world with Elia Licardi and photograph many of the most beautiful places on the planet. The thing is, is that that type of epic photography in my opinion, it's just a little bit too over the top to hang on my wall large. I don't want somebody to come into my beach house and see a gigantic picture of a glacier in Iceland and then walk around the corner and see a, a, a crazy temple in Japan. I want the photographs that I hang on my wall to be a little bit more ambiguous. Uh, I, I don't mind if you can tell what it is, but I don't want it to be an easily recognizable location. I don't want the colors to be wacky, you know, neon colors that just, draw all of your attention when you walk into a room. I'd rather it be more about color and shapes than something super specific. Now, I've taken some really cool pictures of Puerto Rico over the years, and I'm gonna print some of these out, but I also wanted some more abstract photographs as well. So I decided to go out and take some pictures for myself and specifically some pictures that my wife asked for as well. So for three mornings in a row, I got up around sunrise and I just drove around my neighborhood. I went to garden areas, I went to beach areas, I shot things that you would probably drive past and never even think to photograph. And surprisingly, these shots were some of my favorite that I printed. Now for years, I have mocked photographers who take pictures of flowers and act like they're some artistic genius, but my wife specifically asked that I get two photographs of this really beautiful flower that grows down here in Puerto Rico. There's a few trees right outside of my neighborhood. So I got some pictures. So before we get into the actual prints, let's talk about these frame TVs. I have a love-hate relationship with this product. The way that the TV actually hangs on the wall does look like a picture frame. It hangs totally flat, and if you look down the side of the TV, you won't be able to see anything at all. The brains of the TV come in a separate box, and a single wire connects that brain to the TV itself. And in our living room, we decided to just paint the wire and hide it behind a plant. But in our dining room, we decided to drill a hole through the wall and put the brains in our pantry on the other side of the wall. Now, the most important part of this product for me is the art mode. How does it actually look? And I have to say, when it's working correctly, it looks fantastic. The problem with it is that it's not very reliable. For it to look realistic and actually look like art, it needs to balance the brightness of the screen with the ambient light in the room, which obviously is changing all day as the sun goes up and down. And if that measurement is equal, it looks incredible. It looks just like art, which is exactly what I wanted. But the problem is the, the light sensor on this thing is wrong all the time. The TV is on right now, but you cannot tell because it is on the lowest absolute setting. And it does this all the time. I don't know why it does this. Yep, oh, it's getting a little brighter, but still basically black. It's just so frustrating because when it looks good, it looks amazing, but it feels like 40% of the time that it's on, this is what it looks like. And then at night when there's no sun, but you have all the lights on in the house, if there's a problem, it's going to be way too bright, and then that kind of breaks the magic as well. It no longer looks like art, it looks like a glowing television with a static image on it. The TV also has a motion sensor, so it'll turn itself off after 30 minutes or an hour, whatever you set to save power, and then when somebody walks by, it'll turn back on, or at least it's supposed to. So, here we go. <laughs> it's just 
completely off right now. I can move in front of the sensor and nothing will happen until I go over to the remote control and manually turn it back on. Uh, I would say it does this at least once a day and I cannot figure out why. So can I recommend these TVs? Kind of, I mean, when it works, I love it. It just doesn't work all the time, which is incredibly frustrating. So if you want perfect looking prints in your house, we're gonna have to do it the old fashioned way. We're gonna have to print these things out. We're gonna have to nail a hole in the wall. And we're gonna have to hang up a picture. Let's get to it. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Sal Digital wanted to sponsor this video and they wanted to help me outfit my entire house with prints, which was fantastic. Cause honestly, I have been needing this for a long time. So I went on their website and was overwhelmed by how many different photography print products they have. For this video, I wanted to focus on three main types of prints. First of all, simple prints on different types of photo paper. Second, I wanted to buy a few pre-framed prints where they actually print it on the paper of your choice and then frame it for you and send it to you. And the frames are very easy to open and customize so you can swap out your pictures very easily later if you want to. And then third, and obviously the most expensive are acrylic prints. If you guys are unfamiliar with this, Basically, they are prints that are mounted to a clear acrylic on the front. That's going to keep your prints safe, but it also gives you this super modern frameless look as well. The first thing I opened were all of the prints on the different types of photo paper. And many of the different art papers that they allow you to print on at Sal Digital looked and felt pretty similar to me. They're very soft and textured, almost like a felt texture to them. They do look a lot more artistic than your average glossy or matte photo paper. And the prints look fantastic. I picked my absolute favorite prints from this bunch and I mounted them all in really cheap frames I bought from Amazon. This process took a little bit longer than I expected because everything had a protective film on it that I had to pull off of every single thing. So it was really nice when I got to open up the pre-framed prints from Sal Digital. Now let's talk about what you probably came here for, the absolute top of the line prints. These are on acrylic and Sal Digital calls them gallery print. There are two main options that you have with these prints. You can either get them in a glossy finish, which is the uh, a finish of the acrylic that's on the front of the print, or you can get a matte finish. Now, my wife, the interior designer, told me to get everything matte. And I said, I don't think we should do that because all of the prints that we have downstairs and our frame TVs all have a glossy finish on them. So why don't we get glossy downstairs and then we'll do matte upstairs so that everything matches? Well, I have to say in this case, she was right because these are the glossiest glossy finish I have ever seen in my life. And I think I would prefer this finish if I were mounting these prints in a dark room but these prints are so reflective and we have windows and glass doors everywhere in our house and they are so reflective. It's even sometimes hard to see the prints because no matter where you look, it's reflecting a window or door somewhere. So if you're printing them in a darker room, you know, or a basement or somewhere that doesn't have an adjacent window, go glossy. I think it looks fantastic. But if there are adjacent windows from your prints, definitely consider the matte finish. So it was finally time to hang all of these prints and I'm not gonna say it was hard, but it was so much harder than I thought it was going to be. I'm used to hanging prints in the United States where we have drywall, you just, you know, hammer in a little nail, oh, it's not in the right spot, just pull the nail out, move it a little bit, hammer, okay, all done. Not in Puerto Rico. We have 100% concrete walls here. You cannot nail a nail into these walls. You can't even screw into these walls. If you wanna put a screw or a nail in, you have to drill out the wall first and you can't just use any drill bit. You have to use a masonry drill bit. Those aren't the right bits. Now, may I make a suggestion for you so that you don't have to go through what I just went through. Even if you're in the United States, I suggest going to a hardware store and getting these little plastic hammer things that you can just hammer directly into a wall. They make it super easy to hang stuff like this. And they make them for both drywall and for concrete. We had a couple that were made for concrete. And then most of them that came with the cheapo frames that I bought from Amazon were made for drywall and they do not work in concrete. What the fuck? 
Oh my gosh. The other thing that you should buy, and I own at my other house, but not this one, and I thought I didn't need it, is a laser level. If you're gonna be hanging a few prints even with each other, just go out and buy one of these things. You can hold it up to the wall and it's going to create a perfectly straight laser line across your wall. It makes hanging pictures a breeze. We tried to do it with this little bitty level like this and we tried to hang prints like wide across the wall, like right here behind me. And every time I would back up and look at what I had just finished, it was never straight. And I would have to do it again and again and again. I understand this is easy in drywall. It is not easy doing this in concrete. But we finally finished. And at the end of the day, it feels so good to have something on our walls. And it feels even better and more fulfilling to have my own work on the walls. You know, it's, it's a reminder that yeah, I, I don't just do this for a living, I do this because I enjoy it. Now, I realize I have some very expensive photography products in this video, but if I could choose only one to have for the rest of my life, it would be the cheapest option. It would be a standard photography print on matte photo paper like I have right here. And honestly, these are some of my favorite prints from the entire project. I took these in like two minutes outside by my house. I just love the way they look together. And all three of these images together, 11 by 17, framed, matted, I think it cost me around $50. Printing out your work does not have to be expensive. So go ahead, print out your favorite work, frame them, hang them. If you take something better in the future, take the images out of the frame, replace them. You can do that, but I guarantee once you finally see them hanging on your wall, you're gonna appreciate it.